Hello, today we'll be doing 2.2 using midpoints. So if a point is the midpoint of a segment, then it bisects the segment into two congruent segments. So if I have, let's go ahead and draw this line here. A, B, and C, and I say that B is a midpoint. That is going to tell me that AB is congruent to BC. So then, once again, we talked about this in 2.1. When you draw those lines, that means they are equal to one another. So these are congruent segments now. Now, because of that B is a midpoint. So. Examples one and two, which points below are a midpoint? Explain, hint, each problem has two answers. So let's take a look at number one. I can see that these two lines mean that AB and BD are congruent to one another. So if I'm just looking at this part of the line, I can say that B is the mid segment or midpoint of this segment. It divides AD in half. All right, and then over here, we don't have lines, but we do have numbers, and they're both three, so that would mean F is my midpoint. So F divides DE in perfectly in half. So that means DF is congruent to FE, sorry. So same thing over here, I can draw that. AB is congruent to BD. I cannot draw the right letters today. All right. So with that in mind, see if you guys can figure out number two. I'll give you guys a second, and then I'll talk about it. OK, so the very first thing I notice is that we have two threes again. So that means B is the mid-segment of AD. So I know that B, or mid segment, midpoint, it is the midpoint in this segment. All right, and then if I look on the other side, we have a 4 and a 2. So those aren't the same numbers, so we can't say that C is a midpoint. But let's go ahead and add these together. So 3 plus 3 equals 6, so that means AD is 6. And then if I add 4 and 2, that is also 6. So that means D is the mid-segment of this entire line. It divides this segment right in half. All right, so let's go ahead and work on finding variables if we know that we have a midpoint. So if we know we have a midpoint, so all of these M is our midpoint, I know that this side has to be equal to that side. So whatever these terms are, I'm going to set them equal to one another. So number three was super simple. Since one side was 17 and the other side was x, then 17 has to equal x. All right, then with four, we have our mid-segment again. 14 is congruent to 2x minus 5. So once again, I'm going to write that equality statement. This time, we have to do a little bit of work, though, because x isn't by itself. So we're actually going to have to solve for x this time. So I'll go ahead and add 5 to both sides. Move up here. We have 19 equals 2x divided by 2, and 19 over 2 equals x. OK. Let's try it again with number five. So M, once again, is a mid-segment, which means this is congruent to that. So X plus 26 equals 3X plus 2. So I'll go ahead and combine my like terms. So I now have 24 equals 2X, which means X has to equal 12. All right, I'm number six. So number six also wants you to find PQ, but I want you to start off with finding X. So let's go ahead and go through that first. 
My screen is Hold on. Alright, so here it is. Go ahead and try to find x if m is the midpoint. And then we'll talk about finding pq. All right, so since P is, or M is the midpoint, we have X plus 26 has to equal 5X minus 30. So I now have 56 equals 4X. So I go and divide by 4, so X equals 14. Okay, so we know that x equals 14. Now I want to find pq. So that's this entire line. The nice thing, since I know that this half has to equal this half, I can just add one side together twice. Or if we continue with our um, angle addition, or not angle addition, a uh, segment addition, where we have pm plus mq equals pq. So that'll always work. The part plus the other part will give you the whole thing. So PM equals X plus 26. And then MQ is 5X minus 30. And we're trying to find PQ, so it's okay that that stays there. So I know X is 14, so I'm going to go ahead and plug 14 in. Oops. All right. Sorry about that. I accidentally clicked on a notification. So X equals 14 plus 26 and then I have plus 5 times 14 because it's 5 times x minus 30 equals pq. So from here you can just plug this into a calculator. So 14 plus 26 plus 5 times 14 minus 30. So once you do that I end up with or I ended up with 80. Hopefully you did too. So 80 is PQ. All right, let's take a look at the next page. So the next page is an exploration. So I want you guys to actually take a moment and fill this in. So we're trying to figure out the midpoint for each of these lines. So you're just plotting that here. So I'll give you a second to do that. Alright, so I went ahead and drew the uh, points that is in the middle of each of these lines. So if you were to count, you, were, you can find where those line up. Okay, so assume you have two test scores in geometry, 80 and 90. What is your average test score and how did you figure that out? So, if you had a chance to answer this one... So I got 85, and that is because it's in the middle. So very similarly with these lines, I found the point that was in the middle to find the midpoint. So the average score between 80 and 90 is in the middle of 80 and 90, so therefore 85. So the midpoint formula. The midpoint of a segment M can be found by using this formula. <clears throat> so if we have a line here, we're, we're going to have x1 and y1, and then x2 and y2. So that's what those points mean. It's always x, y, but each point, you're going to have your first point that has x1 and y1, and then your second point that has x2 and y2. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. So our first one, we have 5, 8, and 2, 20. So remember, it's x and y, x and y. So x1 is 5, plus x2 is 2, and I'm dividing that by 2. Then my y term is going to be 8 plus 20 all over 2. So I now have 7 over 2, 
28 over 2, and then I want to reduce as far as I can. So 7 over 2 can't be simplified to a whole number. It can be a decimal. And then 28 divided by 2 is 14. So the midpoint of these two points, 5, 8, and 2, 20, is 7 over 2, comma, 14. All right, let's try this with number 8. So I have my x1, so negative 3, plus my x2, minus 11, all over 2, comma, y1, 7, plus y2, 7 again. All right, so now I just have to combine these terms and simplify as far as I can. So I have negative 14 over 2, comma, 14 over 2. So negative 14 divided by 2 will give me negative 7, and then 14 over 2 will give me positive 7. So there is my midpoint from negative 3, 7 and negative 11, 7. All right, so take a second and try number 9. All right, so here's number 9. Go ahead and take a look at the work, see if you have any questions, and write them down for your teachers so you can ask them. All right, example 10 through 11. So given that M is the midpoint of AB, find the coordinates of the end point B. So when we think about our line, whether it's horizontal or if it has that slope, we have, we're gonna have A, M, and B. So it's going to be, if I have my x's here and my y's here, it's going to be the same adding of x's. So I'm going to add, let's say I add 2 here to get to m. Then I'm also going to add 2. I'm going to add 2 to get to b. So if I add 2 from a to m, that means I also have to add 2 from m to b. Same thing with the y if I decided to subtract. 10 from my A to my midpoint, then from my midpoint to my other point, I also have to subtract 10. So it has to be that same distance every single time. So when you're given one point and then the midpoint, you have to figure out what is the distance for your X values and for your Y values. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the points down here so I have a little bit more room to work with. So I have 3, 2, and 7, negative 3. So let's start with the x values. So from 3 to 7, I am adding 4. So that means for my b value, so this is a, midpoint, and my b will be next. From my, x, or from my midpoint to my b value, I also have to be adding 4. So that means I now have 11. All right, then let's take a look at our y's. So from a to my midpoint, I am subtracting 5, which means from my midpoint to my b value, I also have to subtract 5, which will give me negative 8. So my b value is 11, negative 8. Since I know it's the midpoint, I know it's going to travel the same amount every single time. All right, let's try number 11. So I'm going to rewrite them again just so I have that extra room like I did with number 10. So I have my A value, then I have my midpoint, and I'm trying to figure out my B. So from negative 2 to 4, I am adding 6. So negative 2 to 4, add 6. So that means from my midpoint to my B value, I also have to add 6, which will give me 10. So 4 plus 6 equals 10. All right, and then for my Ys, I'm adding 5. Then over here, I have to add 5 again. So now I have 20. And there is my end point B. So since we have that midpoint, we know that's going to be the same for both times. All right, and then that is the end of 2.2. If you have more questions, please feel free to ask your teacher. Have a great day.